The Quran sent to mankind to guide us all the way to the day, the, way to the, day. the day where we'll be as what we did in our life to make it that way. So we need to be ready and prepared. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasidna Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode of Sunnah Star. Today's episode is, of course, another special episode dealing with another issue, another topic that really concerns youth today. And I've received, I think, this is one of the most popular uh, posts that I received. And um, it's a very, very big issue in today's world, specifically now focusing on the Muslim youth, and that is pornography. <clears throat> pornography, porn addiction, the addictions and the realities. It has become such a wide, widespread thing, like it spreads like a wildfire. And myself as a teacher, I've experienced that a lot of my students are involved in this and they don't even, uh, subhanAllah, shy away from it. I've seen some of my students, you know, forwarding text messages and pictures and so on, and even admitting it. I have, I have had people coming to me and complaining about these addictions. I have had people coming to me and talking to me about, you know, that, uh, you know, their friends or so on and so forth are indulged into this and they are Muslims. So it is so alarming, subhanAllah. Now, I want to, you know, go back. When I grew up, subhanAllah, in, in Romania, Eastern Europe, in, in the 80s and the 90s, you know, with the youth around, and you know, pornography was, was something so normal. People were watching it, everyone was doing it, people were borrowing tapes, you can get it. Children were able to get it from the video store, subhanAllah. And if you look at that today, it has become that, you know, you don't even have to go to the video store anymore. Any child can get it on the internet and so on and so forth. The, the way that the uh, search engines are designed, you can type in a certain word, which might have a very, you know, easy connotation. You can type in something like, you know, elephant or something like, you know, kitty. And you might get the sites that are, subhanAllah, a'udhu billah, yani pornographic. And the child is sitting there by himself, you know, being exposed to this thing and he's clicking, 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 clicking. And all of a sudden, he finds that or she finds that she cannot help herself but go back to these sites and watching these things. This is when the addiction kicks in. Type. What is porn? What is pornography? See, pornography, the etymology of the word porn comes from a Greek word that you know, has the meaning of prostitutes. And graph, okay, graph pornography, uh, to record or to illustrate, to graph something, right? Like when you say in English, I'm graphing this, right? So, when this, what's the history of this? When did this happen? Well, actually, there are ancient illustrations that have, you know, that show people engaging in, you know, these kind of acts. These are some of the earliest, you know, things. People had this perversity from, for a long time. Of course, back then there was no movies or no other way of expression except through making sculptures or through, uh, you know, making certain, uh, you know, paintings or so on and so forth. We, find, we know the pictures, you know, of Kama Sutra and so on and so forth, Hindu temples even representing having some of these, you know, nasty things happening, subhanAllah. So there is a history of it. But as understood today, the beginnings of porn were not till the Victorian era, which is approximately the uh, 1837. Obscene publication, you know, uh, they did not, not start till that time. Now, there's, it's interesting because in 1857 in UK, there was a law that prevented obscene publication. So we can see that it was, it was beginning to, you know, to, to take place. It was starting to rise. So there was a need for a law. In 1857, this law was passed called the Law of Obscene Publications. You can check it out which was meant to kind of safeguard and protect, you know, people from being exposed to these things. Some people have started turning to books and actually, subhanAllah, writing kind of, you know, erotic books. And this was also passed through that means. In the eight, however, in 1896, that was the earliest movie that ever depicted this kind of, you know, activity, pornographic activity. 1896, you're talking about more than 100 years ago. So there's definitely some history behind it. It definitely has some strength. It's been definitely, you know, developing over, you know, a century, subhanAllah. 
So in the early 1920s, uh, private pornography movies were, were began to be produced in the in the UK, in America, and many other places. However, the shock came in 1969 in Denmark when it was legalized. 1969, imagine that. So already people, their morality was changing. Now imagine 1969. This is the time of our you know grand grandparents and the, the morals that they have, and how they used to deal with us, and how they used to teach us. And then if we look at the progression, imagine our times now. What a change, subhanAllah. Today, in this time right now, it is a huge industry. Multi-million, or even you can say, subhanAllah, billion do dollars industry. In 1998, Forrester Research published a report on the online adult content and the industry estimating 750 millions to 1 billion in annual revenue. This is huge. Imagine that. How do they get this revenue? Of course from people buying these things, people watching on the websites, on the different you know, pornographic websites. And at that time the internet was not even that strong. Today the internet is, you know, is probably more popular than TV. So you find that, I mean, these, these numbers are, are amazing. 2009, the annual income from porno pornographical generated you know, movies were 2.6 to 3.9 billion dollars. Imagine that annually. It is estimated that every second Three thousand and seventy-five dollars are being spent or pornography. Every second, that means now, now, subhanAllah. Every second, 28,258 internet users are viewing pornography. Every second, as we speak right now. In that same second, 372 internet users are typing adult search terms into search engines. Every 39 minutes, a new pornographic video is being created in the United States of America. So, these are amazing stats. These are stats that should alarm us. These are stats that should frighten us. As Muslim youth, as parents, as we just watched in some of the previous episodes, we talked about the evils of committing you know, these acts. Because... Pornography, what is it? It is basic like adultery, but you're watching it. What will that cause into you? Well, it will actually cause that desire into you to go and actually make it real, right? You have that you're watching someone committing zina, and then you are being attracted to anyone, say, well, you know, I should maybe try it. So, of course, the, neg the consequences will be that people will do that. We find that rapes have correlation to pornography. We find that divorces have correlation to pornography. We find that all these evils in moral acts, perversities, have correlation to watching pornography. Let's go and view some more stats. And I was very shocked, subhanAllah, because there are so many statistics about you know, uh, pornography. And... Uh, it's, it's amazing. It says 2006 and 2005 pornography in the United States industry, the revenue statistics, you know, magazines, novelties, cable TV, exotic dances, internet, video, and the video is stopping the chart, subhanAllah, close to 4.5, 4.5 billions. This is nothing, and it's not in the millions, not in the thousands, in the billions. Video sales and rentals, 3.62 billions. Internet 2.84, cable 2, exotic dance clubs 2.19. SubhanAllah, I ask the women who have husbands, how can you feel comfortable that you allow your husband to go to these kind of places? And it happens so much in the, you know, they'll have like a lunch or a dinner at these kind of clubs. And it's like boys' night out. And the women now, subhanAllah, look at this. The women now have created the clubs where the men are, you know, welcoming the women. I mean, their dancers, the male dancers are doing it. And women are going out. They say, we're having the, the girls' night out. And Muslim sisters are going. And Muslim brothers are going to these things and say, you know what, my friends, I need to go with my friends. Look at this peer pressure, subhanAllah. So these are, these are staggering yani, uh, uh, numbers. 
we look at the search terms in 2006, top adult search request. The word sex, 75 uh, million, 6,800, subhanAllah, look at this. Adult dating, 30 million. Adult DVD, 30 million, uh, 13 million. Uh, porn, 23 million. Sex toys, 15 million. Teen sex, 13 million. Uh, free sex, 13 million. Adult sex, 13 million. Really, I mean, just staggering, these, these uh, keywords. So, and... Now it's going to be a bit shocking, but the word sex, okay, the word sex, the keyword sex typed in, the f number one country, the number one country that searches it is Pakistan, a Muslim country, subhanAllah. Number two, India. Number three, Egypt, another Muslim country. Number four, Turkey, another Muslim country. Number five, uh, uh, Algeria, another Muslim country. Number six, Morocco another Muslim country. Number seven, Vietnam, uh, Indonesia, another Muslim country. SubhanAllah. In the top ten, the majority are Muslim countries searching for the keyword sex. So these things, we need to think about it. Um, pornographic websites, I just want to you know, wrap up with, uh, so, uh, with the, um, a few more statistics. 4.2 million websites, pornographic websites, 12% of the total websites that exist. Pornographic pages, 420 million. Daily pornographic search engine requests, daily, 68 million. 25% of total search engine requests. Daily pornographic emails, 2.5 billion. That is 8% of total emails. Internet users who view porn, 42.7%. Receive unwanted exposure to sexual material, 34%. Average daily pornographic email user, 4.5 per internet user. Look at that. Monthly pornographic downloads, peer-to-peer, 1.5 billion, 35% of all downloads. So these are really, really you know, amazing. And look, children internet statistics. The average age of first internet exposure to pornography is 11 years old. Largest consumer of internet pornography, the group is 35 to 49 age group. 15 to 17 years old, having multiple and these exposures are 80%. 8 to 16 year olds, having view, uh, viewed porn online, 90%. Most while doing homework. Most while doing homework. Look at that. 7 to 17-year-old age uh, who, who would freely give out home addresses, 29%. Uh, 7 to 17-year-olds who would freely give out email addresses, 14%. Children's character names linked to thousands of porn links, 26 including Pokemon and Action Man. Look at this, subhanAllah. Look at the traps that these people are putting onto our youth, to the Muslim youth. These are traps, traps of shaitan, and these people are the armies of shaitan. Inshallah, we will take a break, and we will see you back to continue with this amazing topic. What we did in our life to make it their way, so we need to be ready and prepared. We're only a few sunsets away from the month of change, an opportunity that is given to us only once a year. Take a look at this. Take a look at your future. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa It's a very windy and dusty day here. We're about an hour out of Cairo in the middle of the desert. Al ikhlas, sincerity. Whether you are alone in the middle of the ocean, in a boat, or on a river, or in a busy city street, your only way to success in this life and the next is through sincerity. Methanol, which is the fuel that is used for rockets. 
that is placed inside cigarettes that we're putting into our bodies when we're breaking our fast. Subhanallah. Together, let's plant the seeds, the seeds of change. We did not laugh to make it their way, so we need to be ready and prepared. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back, dear viewers. We're talking about an amazing topic. I've received so many questions on the Facebook. People have always, you know, asked me about how to deal with this issue, this pornography addiction how to deal with uh, the evils of it, how to deal with the, the you know, with, with their friends and the people are watching, spouses sometimes, subhanAllah. We were looking at some, you know, just mind-boggling statistics about pornography. How many websites are there? How many people view it? How many, how much money, how much revenue comes out of these things? And we said, subhanAllah, that these are the traps of shaitan that people fall into. People don't understand that when you click and click and click and go and go, you will become addicted. This is, it's meant to be addictive. So you can return and spend more money. People are making money. You are paying people. You are giving them your hard-earned money for this. Now you have, you know, just talking on the phone. I mean, in Spain, the West, is this new, you know, phenomenon of talking on the phone with, with certain, you know, women and so on and so forth. Uh, then you pay for it. You have so many different options, subhanAllah, and people are falling. And specifically, Muslim youth are falling to it. Because as we've talked in previous episodes, the halal is restricted and the haram is available. So much. I mean, if you ever to compare the amount of pornographic websites compared to how many Islamic websites there are, I mean, you would find a, you know, a very, very big difference, right? So let us re remind ourselves and know this. Let us read a few more statistics just to put things in perspective. It says that pornography consumers access pornography both at work and at home. So people are not even, they don't even care about it anymore. They'll do it at work, imagine. While they're working, subhanAllah, a total of 40 million U.S. adults regularly visit pornographic websites. Uh, men admitting to accessing pornographic websites at work, 20%. At work, U.S. adults who regu regularly visit internet pornography sites, 40 million, 40 million. Um, promise keeper men who viewed pornography in last week, 53%. Christians who said pornography is a major problem in the home, 47%. Adults admitting to internet sexual addiction, 10%. This is just admitting it. Imagine, it's so hard to admit it, subhanAllah. This is, I'm, I'm sure the numbers are so much more. Because admitting that you have a problem, this is you know, the first step, and a lot of people are not willing to take that step. And of course, a lot of people don't consider this to be an issue, so it's not going to be reported. A lot of people think it's just normal. Breakdown of female... A male female visitors to pornographic websites, 72% males, 28% females. So it seems that males are more inclined uh, towards this. Now let's look though, however, at uh, women on pornography. Let's take a look at also at this aspect. It says that women keep in their cyber activities uh, secret 70%. So it might be that uh, women might not have, you know, um, admitted yeah, to this. Uh, women struggling with pornography addiction, 70%, 17%. A ratio of women to men uh, favoring chat rooms, two times, subhanAllah. Percentage of visitors to adult websites who are women, one in three visitors. So the numbers are big. Women accessing adult websites each month, 9.4 million. Women admitting to accessing pornography at work, 13%. So, these are staggering, staggering numbers. I could keep going, you can check out the statistics, you know, there's no point in... But I just wanted to bring things in perspective, to understand, Yanni, what are we faced with? This is a huge battle that we are fighting to protect our children, to protect our chastity, to protect the integrity that we have to protect our deen, subhanAllah, because, I mean, come on, once you start watching this, once you feel addicted, your prayers will be, it will be uh, affected. Your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your understanding of Islam will be affected. Your ability to memorize the Quran will be affected. Your ability to make tawbah will be affected. And I remember, I'll give you a, a very you know, interesting example, because there was a friend of mine who 
and he was he he was a Muslim alhamdulillah he became Muslim and then he had he was struggling with you know being addicted to girls and all this fitna right and this issue caused him this addiction to girls and trying to date and you know this this it wasn't you know he just couldn't give it up he couldn't give up the fact that he's so attracted to women and you know he should get he, he couldn't get married people made it difficult on him and he actually caused him to leave Islam and I always when I used to talk to him, I used to tell him, man, you didn't leave Islam because you had issues with Islam. You left Islam because you had issues, you know, with women and you had issues with struggling with these, you know, these kind of things. So we need, we definitely, these, when we, we are promiscuous, when we don't have, you know, taqwa, definitely this will cause us to move away from Islam. Now, how is this affecting Muslim youth? As I've just said, Muslim youth are part of the people who are watching this, okay? There are statistics that deal with Muslim youth. And I'm going to read some of these statistics. But before that, I want to say that denial is a big problem in our community. People will say, you know, maybe one of, this is one of the uh, very few shows that talk about this issue. Because a lot of people don't want to talk about uh, this. Um, it's a taboo. Okay, and there's a concept called elephant in the in, in you know elephant in the room, meaning that sometimes you feel that I am the only one who's suffering from this, and this actually worsens the problem. It makes the problem worse. A lot of Muslim youth might feel lonely, might feel like they're the only ones who are faced with this problem. They're addicted to pornography. You know, they find a fight in their hearts, like, you know, I, I want to pray, I'm going to the masjid, but I'm living like a double life. You know, I'm watching pornography on one side, on the other side I'm praying, people think that I'm, you know, committed to the deen. And it happens a lot. There's, mashallah, a brother who has done a study. He gathered, basically, he, he surveyed 1,000 Muslims going to the masjid Muslims, people who report that they are committed to the deen, who pray five times a day, sometimes even give da'wah and hold positions on the masjid board, and so on and so forth. And he found some staggering findings that majority, a lot of people are addicted to pornography, or are, have, you know, report have been having watched pornography, men and women. These are Muslims. Now people say, no, how can it happen? How can this happen in Islam? How, it's there because you see it. You, especially in the West, as soon as you walk outside of the masjid, as soon as you walk outside of the parking lot, you are faced with these things. You go to someone's house. One time I entered in someone's house. They're just watching there, just normally on the TV. And what are you doing, man? I said, this is what? We're just watching. It's just playing in front of everyone. People are coming, walking inside of this house, and they're just watching it normally. Like it's nothing happening. It's just watching the news or something like that. So you are exposed to it and you'll have that damaging effect. That image records into someone's mind. It will be there as a picture. And of course there's desires when you see the body of a woman or the woman sees the body of a woman. And this will happen to have you know, desires and you want to explore. So there's this big fitna that people are facing with. Now, I want to get to some Muslim statistics. And these are very, very, very important. As I top ten keywords, as I said, were for uh, from Muslim countries when it comes to the uh, word uh, sex. This brother who has done this study, I want to give you the the website. It's called PurifyYourGaze.com. PurifyYourGaze.com, and he has a few um, you know videos, and you can also type on Google uh, "porn in the masjid." Porn in the masjid. And you can find the research that he has done. How did he do the research? And you can get all the details. And he actually is involved in giving advice to the Muslim youth. Helping them overcome this addiction. Helping them deal with this secret lifestyle. Now, of course, the taboos are, you know, are many. And a lot of people might find you know, difficulty in approaching this and... You know, uh, saying that I have a problem, but the way the brother has set up this, you know, this uh, website and the way he is doing this counseling, it definitely safeguards your identity. He's the only one person, pretty much, who knows you know your name. At the same time, he doesn't. He might not. He, I mean, he doesn't know you. So it's something that I definitely recommend. Purifyyourgaze.com. Now, I want to. Before we end this episode, inshallah, inshallah, uh, we will continue with this amazing topic in, some, in the next episodes. But before the, we end this episode, 
we need to understand brothers and sisters especially parents how you raise your kids how you as we talked in previous episode about you know sexual awareness how you give them some guided exposure especially if you live in non-muslim countries you should teach them about you know the dangers of these things you should point out to them and i'm not telling you no let them watch these things or anything like that no way but point out the dangers of these things be careful of knowing where your children are what are they watching what which kind of website are they surfing don't just let them be on themselves and do whatever they want and just be engaged with your own things and they're doing whatever they're doing because definitely without a doubt as we have seen from the statistics that just you know very simple terms such as pokemon action man that muslim you know are watching today you just type it in and you'll get these kind of sites so be careful be careful guard your chastity inshallah we will continue on the next episode assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh The Qur'an sent to mankind To guide us all the way to the day The day day where we'll be as What we did in our life to make it that way So we need to be ready and prepared